All right. If the person is already losing their balance by the time I start to move to the side, we have the guillotine. I hold the wrist. I hang the arm like this, right? If they're already starting to lose their balance, let's let them bend back. It's easy for me to just touch with the lead foot and take them down. Okay, come stand back up, please. If they're committed to the choke very thoroughly, I need to walk my entire body behind them. Because, again, what makes someone tippable? What makes someone tippable is when they're sitting like this, straight. As long as my shoulders are in front and my hips are in back, the force coming this way won't tip me over. I'm going to be strong here. If the person wants to tip me over, they have to get my shoulders behind my hips. And look, once that center line right here is crossed, now even if I just lift my hips, see gravity takes over and I'll fall. So the goal here is to keep the shoulders in front of the hips and the hips behind the shoulders. Right? That motion. I'm always looking to do this on the ground so that if someone's trying to pass, they can't put the shoulders behind the hips and tip me. When you're sweeping someone, you're always looking to tip them by getting the shoulders behind the, hip, uh, the, shoulders behind the hips, right? So, same principle is going to apply here. If I want to take this person to the ground and they manage to roll the body forward enough that their hips are back and their shoulders are forward, but they're still close enough to put the hips in and lift and choke so they haven't crossed that center line, now I'm going to be in danger of getting choked. So I have to position their body so that their shoulders move behind their hips. How do I do that? If the choke is very strong and I'm hanging on and defending the entire time, when I walk to the side by hanging, I keep going until my entire body, look, is behind them. Now you'll see, very obvious and clear here, that his shoulders are far behind his hips. And all I have to do is keep walking and take him to the ground, and for sure he's going to end up here. Now I can just take the hand and put the forearm across the throat, drop the frame, start to move, make him let go, and then see what happens. Maybe I'm under the head, maybe from here I'm stepping over for the mount, maybe I'm putting the knee in the belly, maybe I'm just sitting like this in Keisha Katami, I don't know, right? What matters is that you escape the choke. Now, getting into a little more detail about the way in which the choke may happen. Wrestlers are going to be very fond of doing takedowns where at least one, sometimes both knees, touch the ground. Because they're used to measuring the distance, like this, sometimes they'll touch the head, touch the hand, right? Start to slap a little bit, they'll do this, right? And then they're going to take a step, and look, the step that enters initially is just a short step. It's just a short step to cover the distance. The main distance is covered by what's called a penetration strip, where the front knee now drops to the ground. Once that happens, look, you'll see, if I take a step like this, that's about as close as I can get. But from here, from this step, now when I extend my body even more forward by taking the knee to the ground, look, I'm that much closer and I manage to cover the knees. The head goes to the outside like this and it hangs on the hip. It hangs on the hip because now that I'm pushing him backwards this way, in order for me to finish the takedown, I have to do part two of the takedown. Right? First is penetrate, second is turn the corner. I just walk around in a circle until he falls. Right, so I'm like this and I measure the distance and I step, penetrate, and then from here I walk. And I use my head on the hip to create a counterbalance. I push him this way. Right? As I pull the knees this way, as I walk. And those three things together, the circular motion, the head pushing the hips this way, and the knees coming in, they all combine to make him fall. If I get lazy with my head, and I have poor posture, and I do everything right, 
and we're sitting here and I measure up and I step and penetrate and I go like this, look, there's the guillotine. Now I have to abandon everything and switch to my defense. I better get up. I better get up and see what happens. And don't stop defending until you're free from the choke because he lets go. Okay? Another way I may choose to take someone down is by putting my head to the inside. Sometimes in a more jujitsu style takedown battle, when we're holding the gi, I do something like this and I make the person step. You know, and then when they give me that leg, I'm gonna reach down and scoop it and hold it between my legs. In this instance, in this instance, I want to put my head on the inside, glue my ear to the thigh. Look, if I put it outside, again, potential for the guillotine, okay? So I want to put my head inside and hold the leg like this. Hold the leg like this. My head is inside, glued here. Now the arm can't come under and guillotine me. And it's very easy for me to step out, hold the heel, and take him to the ground, okay? Make sense? So, when one knee goes to the ground, I want to make sure that I have posture up so I can turn the corner easily. If I'm on my feet and I manage to grab a loose leg and I'm bent over like this, keep the head inside tight, lock the ear, lock the ear to the inside of the thigh and hold the leg. Okay? That'll help you. Try both of those and make sure the person can't grab the guillotine. If you feel like it's coming, do that. Connect the shoulder and the ear to each other. That's all. Okay? Let's try.